And maybe the hottest hot button issue there is on college campuses. And today, Education Secretary Betsy DeVos jumped right on that button, announcing the Trump administration is moving toward new guidelines on how campuses should deal with sexual assault. In recent years, the Obama administration had threatened to withhold federal funds from schools that did not move quickly to resolve sexual assault complaints and protect students who reported such attacks. And instead of going through a criminal trial, victims could push to have their attackers expelled from campus and file a Title IX complaint if they felt administrators did not do enough. It's a process DeVos says is seriously flawed. Survivors aren't well served when they are re-traumatized with appeal after appeal because the failed system failed the accused. And no student should be forced to sue their way to due process. DeVos says her department will seek public input, but ultimately plans to replace the current system with what she called a more effective and just version. So is this a problem that needs a fixing? And if so, is this the fix? Joining me to debate our Harvard Law professor, Ron Sullivan, his colleague, I see you, Ron, by Good the way, you. his colleague, retired federal judge, Nancy Gertner. Nice to see you, Judge. Former U.S. Attorney Michael Sullivan, appointed by uh, President Bush. Nice to see you as well. Thank you. If I can start with you, Judge, you had concerns, I know you've written about this, about fairness of sexual harassment, sexual assault policy at Harvard. Uh, but did DeVos address these things, or is this a hammer trying to cure a headache? I think she kicked the can down the road. How so? Well, she was saying that we're going to have a hearing process and we'll look at, listen to both sides. I'm not sure that she necessarily landed anywhere. It was true that there was an overreact. There was a re initially a reaction to a legitimate problem, which was sexual assault on campus. Then there was arguably an overreaction in some campuses. Then you wound up with the anomalous situation that Harvard University has one sexual assault policy and Harvard Law School has another in which I participated, we participated. So it was, it needed to be fixed in the sense that there are certainly campuses that are on the, that, that have basically blottoed any due process concerns. I'm not sure that all that she's saying is we'll have notice and comment and we'll come up with a fairer system. You're, you're nodding in agreement, but it seems to be one thing, even if she didn't say the word say, that she's been targeting in her discussions is the standard of proof most of us know from television uh, beyond a reasonable doubt. That's criminal trials. Right. Here, there's clear and convincing, and then all the way down here, sort of more than likely preponderance of the evidence, which is the standard that essentially is enforced by the Obama letter, the Dear Colleague letter. She wants to get rid of that, and people like you who have been criminal defense lawyers, you don't like that standard, do you, or do you? No, I don't, I don't like that standard. I think there Why ought not? to be a high. It's simply not high enough for the sort of charge that people are attempting to uh, litigate in these cases. They don't go to cases. jail. They don't go to jail, but they do get, get kicked out of school. And I, I did a little thought experiment. If they're found guilty. If they're found guilty. Or liable. Or and and the, the penalty of being kicked out of school is as harsh to many as spending a, a day, a month, a, a year in jail. There's a, there's a real interest in, in one's education. And if you're going to take an education away from someone in a place like Harvard or, or, or any place, really, it, it ought to be done fairly and consistent with some process. So if the boss ultimately recommends raising that threshold, both of you would celebrate that, would you not? It, it, it's not, ju I'm, I'm, I'm in it's the middle, not just actually. a threshold. Yeah, I'm in me. the middle. I mean, it's one thing to say a preponderance of the evidence if there are other guarantees, if people get yeah. access to the information, have an opportunity to defend themselves in terms of the charges. I don't think that preponderance is, a, is as bad if there's at least a, a system that gives, it's like a civil system. But you know what's even worse? When elite universities used to push this stuff under the rug because they didn't Absolutely. want to aggravate parents of would-be freshmen, right. which is why Obama acted to begin with. Where are you on this? Well, first off, I think it's premature to be uh, critical or harsh with regards to uh, her intent. Her intent is to make sure that you know, victims are being properly empowered and that the consequences are appropriate based on the uh, charges. So I, I applaud her for at least taking a look at it and making sure that there's a process in which the, uh, the victims aren't re-victimized. But how is a victim uh, properly empowered if it turns out it's more difficult to prove that a sexual... I mean, this comes in the context of, of Candace Jackson, who is the civil rights head in the education department, who works for Betsy DeVos, saying 90% of campus assaults were really drunken, regretted sex. I mean, That's this right. is the yep. person yeah. who's one of the leaders <laughs> right. of this effort. How does a victim get empowered when it's more difficult to prove you were sexually assaulted? But, but you're jumping to a conclusion that n nobody has reached yet in terms of whether or not it's going to be more difficult. First off, there are two avenues, I suppose three avenues. The one that we hope the victim never pursues and the, the avenue we hope she never pursues is not disclosing it and making sure that uh -huh. people that 
you know, or uh, victimizing her or held accountable. The, the other two avenues, and they're not mutually exclusive, um, or they can be mutually exclusive, um, is the process on the campus and the criminal process. Well, I want to talk about the criminal process. Uh, just <laughs> quickly going down the line, why shouldn't that woman just punch 911 into her phone and let people who are used to dealing with criminal acts, alleged criminal acts, deal with them, Ron? That's one option. It shouldn't be the individual's sole option. They should get redressed from the school as well. How about that? Well, because you understand we're not only talking about rape, we're also talking about sexual harassment. We're talking Understood. about things yeah, which right, don't belong in a criminal court and Good as point. to which a school has a right to deal with codes of conduct. So I think it's appropriately in the universities. Woman calls you on the phone and says, I'm a victim of sexual assault, not harassment on a campus. Do you tell her to call 911? I'd certainly encourage you to call 911 and let law enforcement participate. And it doesn't have to be exclusively law enforcement. She could pursue her remedies at the college Simultaneously. Let's well. switch gears if we can. Donald Trump's speech before a rally in Phoenix last month covered a lot of ground, including a bit of foreshadowing. Do the people in this room like Sheriff Joe? Yeah. Was Sheriff Joe convicted for doing his job? That's what... He should have had a jury, but you know what? I'll make a prediction. I think he's going to be just fine, okay? And indeed he was. Three short days later, the president pardoned Sheriff Joe Arpaio after his conviction of criminal contempt for racial profiling. One noted jurist, though, reacted by saying, well, this pardon was legal. We may be going down a very slippery slope. That jurist, by the way, is sitting right in front of me. Before we get to that jurist, do you all agree that Donald Trump has the constitutional power to do this? Because a colleague of yours from Harvard Law School, Crespo, today in The Globe says, well, maybe yeah. interference with an independent judiciary. I, right, I agree with him, actually. You agree with him that it may not, the pardon itself may not be unconstitutional? I, I think that there is an argument. This has never been raised before, and it's never been raised before, because no president ever had the audacity to do what Trump has done. What is it, what is it that he did that was in so other words, audacious? In other words, where, there is, where the underlying case is not a crime, in other words, where what, there's a court order, and if the court can't enforce its orders, if the executive can swoop in and say, gee, you don't have to enforce this order, then the, then the separation of powers is fundamentally un imbalanced. Where are you on this? Did I he think he abs do? absolutely had the, the, uh, the power to do it. There's no question. I don't think um, that power, I don't think any court, um, the United States Supreme Court, will determine otherwise if it ever gets there. Do you worry that uh, uh, many liberal critics of this, not just liberal critics, that's not really fair, many critics of this said beyond pardoning former Sheriff Arpaio, he was also sending a message to friends and family of his own who said, if Robert Mueller calls and you don't want to play ball, don't worry about it, because even if you're held in contempt, I'll take care of you. There was that message somewhere in there, was there not? I, I, you know, I didn't hear that message in terms of uh, you know, uh, President Trump's uh, position as relates to the uh, pardoning of the uh, sheriff. I think the pardoning of the sheriff was appropriate. He's 85 years old. He has 50 years of public service. He was convicted by a judge, not by a jury. He had asked for a jury trial. The same judge that issued the original order is the one that convicted no, that's him not true. and sentenced him. That's not true. What's not true? There was a civil contempt, and when the judge, when the civil contempt wasn't working, where you try to get somebody to you pay fines uh -huh. in order to enforce this, then the judge turned the case over to the U.S. Attorney's Office, and it was drawn to a new judge. And the whole process began again. How about the constitutional power, the underlying power, beyond whether it's advisable or not? Does he, the, the president doesn't have the power the, to pardon whomever he chooses so I, 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 federally? I, I think the president does, no matter how repugnant, substantively, one might think it is. So he could be 85, he could be 25, uh, it, could be, it could be a contempt hearing, it could be a, 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 a breaking and entering. Uh, I think it's within the president's prerogative to do it, even if we don't like it. When, when you wrote your piece a couple of weeks ago, you seemed to think for yeah. the globe that he did have the power. But well, well, I, I don't care about why you changed your mind. I care about this. You went on to say that you thought in an old Supreme Court case right. that there was, there's only so far you can go to do right. Maybe once, but if you do it again, you may be committing well, an impeachable th offense. This case, 1925 case, the Supreme Court says the pardon power could be abused. And if a president abuses the pardon power, the appropriate remedy is impeachment. So I said, what would abuse of the pardon power look like in this case? Well, it would be pardoning Manafort and Flynn, not because they didn't deserve the punishment or the punishment was excessive, but to keep them from nailing the president. But, but even and I thought Grossman, that that might be But even Grossman doesn't undermine the right for pardon.
important. It just says that he could pay for it with an impeachment. Gross that's right. That's right. Well, yeah. uh, uh, Michael rejected my notion that there was a message sent there, and he may be right. I don't know. Assuming there is a message, is this the reason why Mueller is pairing with people like Eric Schneiderman from New York, yes. state attorneys general, so that even if you're pardoned from the federal offense, right. it wouldn't cover a state Cor conviction? Correct. Is that right? Yes. Absolutely. Yes, that's right. How about that? Yes? I would agree. Fair yeah. enough. Nice You're still a good you lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Who? <laughs> you. Not really. No, never no, was, no, never will be. Nice to see a judge. Yeah. Pleasure as always. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. Good to see you. Thanks so much for your time. <laughs> it's really not true.